certain snatch or so would serve your turn. Aye, so the turn was served. Aaron, thou hast hit it. Would you had hit it too? Then should not we be tired with this ado? Why, hark ye, hark ye. And are you such fools to square for this? Would it offend you then that both should speed? Fifth, not me. Nor me, to our one. For shame. Be friends and join for that, you jar. Tis policy and stratagem must do that you affect, and so must you resolve that what you cannot as you would achieve, you must perforce accomplish as you may. Take this of me. Lucrece was not more chaste than this Lavinia, Bassianus' love. My lords, a solemn hunting is in hand. There will the lovely Roman ladies troop. The forest walks are wide and spacious, and many unfrequented plots there are, fitted by kind for rape and villainy. Single you thither then this dainty doe, and strike her home by force, if not by words. This way, or not at all, stand you in hope. The Empress' court is like the House of Fame, the palace full of tongues, of eyes, of ears. The woods are ruthless, dreadful, deaf, and dull. There speak and strike, brave boys, and take your turns. There serve your lusts, shadowed under heaven's eye, and revel in Lavinia's treasury. Thy counsel, lad, smells of no cowardice. Sit fast out, Nefas, till I find the stream to cool this heat. A charm to calm these fits. Pastigia, permanez, their whole. The morn is bright and grey, the fields are fragrant, and the woods are green. Uncouple here, and let us make a bay, and wake the emperor and his lovely bride. <laughs> Sons, let it be your charge, as it is ours, to tend the Emperor's person carefully. I have been troubled in my sleep this night, but dawning day new comfort hath inspired. Many good morrows to your majesty, madam, to you as many and as good. <laughs> Save your grace, a hunter's peel. And you have wrung it lustily, my lords. Somewhat too early for new married ladies. Lavinia, how say you? I say no. I have been awake two hours and more. <laughs> Come on, then. Horse and chariots let us have unto our sport. Madam, now shall ye see our Roman hunting. Our dogs, my lord, will rouse the proudest panther in the chase and climb the highest promontory top. And I, have horse, will follow where the game makes way and runs like swallows over the place. <laughs> We hunt not we with horse nor hound, but hope to pluck a dainty doe to ground. 
He that had wit would think that I had none to bury so much gold under a tree and never after to inherit it. Let him that thinks of me so abjectly know that this gold must coin a stratagem, which cunningly effected will beget a very excellent piece of villainy. And so, repose, sweet gold, for their unrest that have their arms out of the empress chest. My lovely Aaron, wherefore looks so sad when everything doth make a gleeful boast? The birds chant melody in every bush, the snake lies rolled in the cheerful sun, and green leaves quiver in the cooling wind. Under their sweet shade, Aaron, let us sit. And whilst the babbling echo mocks the hounds, let us sit down and mark their yelping noise. And after conflict, such as was supposed the wandering prince and Dido once enjoyed, when with a happy storm they were surprised and curtained with a council-keeping cave, we may, each wreathed in the other's arm, our pastimes done, possess a golden slumber. Whilst hounds and horns and sweet melodious birds be unto us as is a nurse's song of lullaby to bring her babe to sleep. Madam, though Venus govern your desires, Saturn is dominator over mine. What signifies my deadly standing eye, my silence and my cloudy melancholy, my fleece of woolly hair that now uncurls even as an adder when she doth unroll to do some fatal execution? Vengeance is in my heart, death in my hand, blood and revenge are hammering in my head. This is the day of doom for Bassianus. His Philomel must lose her tongue today. Thy sons make pillage of her chastity and wash their hands in Bassianus' blood. Seest thou this letter? Take it up, I pray thee, and give the king this fatal plotted scroll. Now question me no more, we are espied. Oh, my sweet more, sweeter to me than life. No more, great empress. Bassianus comes. Be cross with him, and I'll go fetch thy sons to back thy quarrels, whatsoever they be. Whom have we here? Rome's royal empress, unfurnished of a well-perceiving troop. Or is it Diane, habited like her, who hath abandoned her holy groves to see the general hunting in this forest? Saucy controller of our private steps! Had I the power that some say Diane had, thy temple should be planted presently, with horns as was Acteon's, and the hounds should drive upon thy new transformed limbs, unmannerly intruder as thou art. Under your patience, gentle empress, Tis thought you have a goodly gift in horning, and to be doubted that your moor and you are singled forth to try experiments. Believe me, queen, your swart Cimmerian doth make your honour of his body's hue. Spotted, detested, and abominable! Why are you sequestered from all your training? Dismounted from your snow-white goodly steed, and wandered hither to an obscure plot, accompanied by a barbarous moor, if foul desire hath not conducted you. And being intercepted in your sport, great reason that my noble lord be rated for sauciness. I pray you, let us hence, and let her joy her raven-coloured love. This valley fits the purpose passing well. The king, my brother, shall have note of this. Aye, for these slips have made him noted long. Good king, to be so mightily abused. Why, I have patience to endure all this. How oh, now, dear sovereign, and our gracious mother, why if your highness looks so pale and wan? Have I not reason, think you, to look pale? These two have ticed me hither to this place. A barren, detested veil, you see it is, here never shines the sun. 
Hey, nothing breeds unless the nightly owl or fatal raven. And when they showed me this abhorred spot, they told me here at dead time of the night, a thousand fiends, a thousand hissing snakes, <laughs> 10,000 swelling toads, as many urchins, would make such fearful and such confused cries as any mortal body hearing it should straight fall mad or else die suddenly. No sooner had they told this hellish tale, but straight they told me they would bind me here unto the body of a dismal you and leave me to this miserable death. <laughs> And then they called me foul, adulterous, lascivious, goth, and all the bitterest terms that ever ear did hear to such effect. And had you not by wondrous fortune come, this vengeance on me had they executed. Revenge it, as you love your mother's life, or be ye not henceforth called my children. <laughs> This is a witness that I am thy son. And this let me struggle to show my strength. for no name fits thy nature but thy own. Give me thy poniard. You shall know my boys. Your mother's hand shall right your mother's wrong. Say, Madame Mere, it is more belongs to her. This minion stood upon her chastity, upon her nuptial vow, her loyalty, and shall she carry this unto her grave? And if she do, I would I were an eunuch. Drag in her husband to some secret hall and make his dead trunk pillow to our lust. But when ye have the honey we desire, let not this wasp outlive us both to sting. I warn you, madam, we will make that sure. Come, mistress, now for force we will enjoy that nice preserved honesty of yours. Now, Tamara, the best a woman's face. I will not hear her speak. Away with her. Oh, sweet lords, entreat her, hear me but a word. Listen, fair madam. Let it be your glory to see her tears, but be your heart to them as unrelenting flint to drops of rain. When did the tiger's young ones teach the dam? Or do not learn her wrath, she taught it me. No. Yet every mother breeds not sons alike. Do thou entreat her, show a woman pity. What? Would thou have me prove myself a bastard? That is true! The raven doth not hatch a lark! Yet have I heard, or could I find it now, the lion that moved with pity did endure to have his princely paws pared all away. Some say that ravens foster forlorn children, who whilst their own birds famish in their nests, or beat a meal of thy hard heart to say, no, nothing so kind but something pitiful. I know not what it means, away with her. Oh, well, let me teach thee, for my father's sake, that gave thee life when well he might have slain thee. Be not abjured. Open thy deaf ears! Hadst thou in person ne'er offended me, even for his sake am I pitiless. Remember, boys, I poured forth tears in vain to save your brother from the sacrifice, but fierce Andronicus would not relent. Therefore, away with her and use her as you will. The worse to her, the better loved of me. Oh, Tamara, be called a gentle queen, and with thy own hand kill me in this place. For it is not life that I have begged so long. For I was slain when Bassianus died. What begs thou then? Fond woman, let me go. This present death, I beg. And one thing more than womanhood denies my tongue to tell. Oh, keep me from their worse than killing lust. And tumble me into some loathsome pit, where never man's eye may behold my body. Do this, and be a charitable murderer. So should I rob my sweet sons of their fee? No! 
<laughs> Let them satisfy their lust on me. Ah! No, no. Stay not here too long. No, Grace. No, womanhood. No, beastly creature. <laughs> Confusion, boy. No, then I'll stop your mouth. Ah! Farewell, my sons! See that you make her sure! Then let my heart no merry cheer indeed till all the Andronici be made away. Now will I hence to seek my lovely moor and let my spleenful sons this troll deflower. <clears throat> Come on, my lords, and I will bring you straight where I inspired the panther, fast asleep. My sight is very dull, what I hope I And mine, I promise you. <sighs> Were it not for shame, well, could I leave our sport to sleep a while? Whoa! Not they're fallen. What subtle hole is this? <laughs> Upon whose leaves are drops of new shed blood. A very fatal place, it seems to me. Speak, brother, hast thou hurt thee with the fall? Oh, brother, with the dismalst object hurt that ever I with sight made heart lament. Now will I fetch the king to find them here, that he thereby may have a likely guess how these were they that made away his brother. Why dost not comfort me and help me out of this unhallowed and bloodstained hole? Uh, I am surprised with an uncouth fear. A chilling sweat all runs my trembling joints. My, my heart suspects more than mine eye can see. To prove thou hast a true divining heart, Aaron and thou look down into this den and see a fearful sight of blood and death. Aaron is gone, but my compassionate heart will not permit mine eyes once to behold the thing whereon it trembles by some eyes. Ah, tell me how it is, for now till now was I a child to fear I know not what. Uh, oh Lord. Bassianus lies em embrued here, all on a heap like to the slaughtered lamb in this detested, dark, blood-drinking pit. If it be dark, how dost thou notice he? Uh, upon his bloody finger he doth wear a precious ring that lightens all the whole, uh, which, like a, a, a taper in some monument, doth shine upon the dead man's earthly cheeks and shows the ragged entrails of the pit. Oh, brother! Help me with thy fainting hand, if fear hath made thee faint, as me it hath out of this fell devouring receptacle, as hateful as Cocytus' misty mouth. Reach me thy hand, that I may help thee out. A wanting strength to do thee so much good, I may be plucked into the swallowing womb of this deep pit. Poor Bassianus' grave. I have no strength to pluck thee to the brink. Nor I no strength to climb without thy help. Thy hand once more. I will not loose again till thou art here aloft or I below. <laughs> thou canst not come to me. I come to thee. <laughs> Along with me, I'll uh, see what hole is here. <clears throat> Say, who art thou that lately didst descend into this gaping hollow of the earth? The unhappy sons of old Andronicus, brought hither in a most unlucky hour to find thy brother, Bassianus, dead. <laughs> My brother dead? Now, I, I, I know thou dost but jest. He and his lady both were at the lodge. It is not an hour since I left him there. We know not where you left him all alive. But out, alas, here have we found him dead. Where is my lord, the king? Here, Tamara, though grieved with killing grief. Where is thy brother, Bassianus? Well, now to the bottom dost thou search my wound. Poor Bassianus here lies murdered. Then all too late, I bring this fatal writ, the complot of this timeless tragedy.
And if we miss to meet him handsomely, sweet huntsman, Bassianus, tis we mean, do thou so much as dig the grave for him, thou knowest our meaning. Look for thy reward among the nettles at the elder tree, which overshades the mouth of that same pit where we decreed to bury Bassianus. Do this and purchase us thy lasting friends. O oh, Tamara, was ever heard the like? Well, this is the pit. And this, the elder tree, Look, sirs, if you can find the huntsman out that should have murdered Bassianus here. My gracious lord, here is the bag of gold. Two of thy whelps, fell curs of bloody kind, have here bereft my brother of his life. Sirs, drag them from the pit unto the prison, and there let them bide until we have devised some never heard of torturing pain for them. Hi, Emperor, upon my feeble knee I beg this boon with tears not lightly shed, that this fell fault of my accursed sons, accursed if the fault be proved in them, if it be proved, you see it is apparent. <sighs> Who found this letter? Tamara, was it you? Andronicus himself did take it up. I did, my lord, yet let me be their bail. For by my father's reverend tomb, I vow they shall be ready at your highness' will to answer their suspicion with their lives. Thou shalt not bail them. See thou, follow me. Some bring the murdered body. <laughs> Some the murderers. Andronicus. I will entreat the king, fear not thy sons, they shall do well enough. Come, Lucius, come! Stay not to talk with them! <laughs> so now, Gotel! And if thy tongue can speak, who twas that cut thy tongue and ravished thee? <laughs> Go on, call for sweet water, wash thy hands. Well, she hath no tongue to call, nor hands to wash. Hey! And so let's leave her to her silent walks. Mm. And were my cause, mm? I should go hang myself. Thou hadst hands to help thee knit the cord. Go on. Who's this? My niece. If I do dream, would all my wealth would wake me. If I do wake, some planet strike me down that I may slumber an eternal sleep. Speak, gentle niece. What stern, ungentle hands hath lopped and hewed, and made thy body bare of her two branches? Those sweet ornaments whose circling shadows kings had sought to sleep in, and might not gain so great a happiness as half thy love. Why dost not speak to me? But sure some terriers hath deflowered thee, unless thou shouldst detect him cut thy tongue. And now thou turnst away thy face for shame, and notwithstanding all this loss of blood, yet do thy cheeks look red as Titan's face, blushing to be encountered with a cloud. Shall I speak for thee? Shall I say it is so? Oh, that I knew thy heart, and knew the beast, that I might rail at him to ease my mind. Sorrow concealed like an oven stop doth burn the heart to cinders where it is. 
fair Philomela. But she but lost her tongue, and in a tedious sampler sowed her mind. But lovely niece, that mean is cut from thee. A craftier, Tereus cousin, hast thou met, and he hath cut those pretty fingers off that could have better sewed than Philomel. <laughs> At the monster seeing those lily hands tremble like aspen leaves upon a lute and make the silken strings delight to kiss them, he would not then have touched them for his life. Or had he heard the heavenly harmony which that sweet tongue hath made, he would have dropped his knife and fell asleep as Cerberus at the Thracian poet's feet. <sighs> Come, let us go and make thy father blind, for such a sight will blind a father's eye. One hour's storm will drown the fragrant meads. What will hold months of tears thy father's eyes? Do not draw back, for we will mourn with thee. Oh, could our mourning ease thy misery? Hear me, brave 